Okay, I'm just going to let this rip, and I'm just going to tell you, this is not Babylon B. This is real. This is the fulfillment of every stereotype of independent fundamentalist King James Baptist you could ever, ever come up with. And I rolled it back a few minutes just so you can get a feeling, uh, get a full flavor of this kind of, is this, this preaching. I think during the, I think during this sermon that, that um, Dr. Tony Hudson must have said, hey, hey, at least 250 times, minimum of 250 times during this sermon. Hey, hey, look up here now. Look up here now. You okay? Hey, hey. What? I, I must compliment one thing. What? That, that is a massive pulpit. That's a big one. <laughs> I've never seen a pulpit like that before. That's that a, is that is spread out and get cut. You know what? Jerry Maddox would be lost in that pulpit. Yeah, yeah. He yeah. would have places to put everything. That's <laughs> that's true. Well, let's let's now he's gonna trying to follow a subject with Dr. Hudson is a little bit a little bit difficult to do. He's eventually going to get to Calvinism, which is why we're going to talk about it just briefly. Not going to spend much time on it. There ain't much substance to it, but I, I just thought you might. Okay, just get yourself a seat in the saddle. We want everybody to like us. We got to have that Facebook with all these likes and likes and follows. Me and my gang. I mean, we, I mean, you got to have an entourage. <laughs> Let me say something. Till you learn to stand alone, you won't stand for long. Amen. If you have to have, if you have to have, if you have to have these alumni to call you, I've never seen such sissy preachers in my life. You didn't call me today. I speak to Brother West Boiler maybe twice a year. We're friends, but we're not groupies. We're not freaks. <laughs> Got to retweet everything. I'm going to tweet. That sounds effeminate to me anyway. Tweet. Hey, man. Tweet. You sound like tweets. That sounds like the God help us. Is everybody okay? i never seen anything like it. I don't see how you preachers do anything you on that social media so much. I don't see how you feed your mules in the morning. Is everybody okay? It's unreal. And we want everybody to like us. I mean, we can't call it a wall. It's got to be a permanent barrier. I mean, you're so politically correct, God help you. Hey, you vote for Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer. Help me now. You gone, friend. Not John the Baptist's house. When he walked up to him, he had an outlook. He knew the wrong crowd. When he, he was able to define, define that crowd. The Bible said you're supposed to. He said, I command you that you mark those. Note that man who walks not after our traditions. Now let me just stop and say, anybody who's not walking after our doctrine is a heretic. Check this out now. We already know if, the, if he's denying the virgin birth, if he, if he questions the deity of Christ, if he even puts a question on a pre-tribulation rapture, I'm chunking him. Bunch of mid-tree, a bunch of pre-wrath, bunch of false doctrine. Look up in here, big boy, and you Calvinists that might have crept in here. Calvinism is as much a false doctrine as ordaining a woman preacher is. Hey, man! Hey, man. Calvin, I went up to one of my dad and said, I hate it for y'all. We was at a meeting, of, and, I was pretty, and I knew he's, he's way outspoken. He think, they think they're smarter than we are. I said, I hate it for y'all. He said, what are you talking about? I said, Jesus didn't die for y'all. He said, what do you mean? I said, well, he came to seek and to save that which was lost. But according to your doctrine, you've never been lost. <laughs> You've been saved before the foundations of the world. And I said, I hate to see it. I hate to hate it for y'all that y'all think God is stupid. And Calvinists, they think God's stupid. They think God's stupid. He said, what are you talking about? I said, you, you, you think God's stupid. Who was hell made for, everybody? Who was hell made for? The devil and his... Who was hell made for? Who was hell made for? 
Well, where does everybody die that rejects Christ? Are they all angels and devils? No, the Bible said hell hath enlarged herself. Why did God make hell so small if he already knew who was going? Because he wasn't willing that any should perish, so he has to enlarge hell. That's Bible. I don't, you look right. If I had a pipe, I'd say put it in there and smoke it, friend. But my pipe's out in my truck with my chewing tobacco. Is everybody all right? Hey, hey, look up in here. Look up in here. You don't believe the Bible. Hell was made for the devil and his angels. And every time a sinner dies without Christ, he has to enlarge hell. They, Calvinists think God is stupid. Yeah. <laughs> well, what do you say? <laughs> After a program of seriously interacting with history and, <clears throat> and theology, hey man, hey man, <laughs> look up here. Oh man. Oh, I know, the guy sitting there, the, the thought that crossed my mind when he went over and started saying that guy, I wonder if he's been reading R.C. Sproul and he's feeling really guilty right now. <laughs> or he's just afraid that he knows, oh no, you know. <laughs> oh man <clears throat> folks that that's real stuff right there that right right there that that's uh look up here now hey man hey man i can't do it i can't do it. i can't do it <clears throat> uh do i really need to respond to what he said because it was just pretty obvious you know we we don't believe we've been saved from the foundation of the earth god elects us but the application of that is in time and um god's stupid because he has to expand hell or so i i don't know but there are folks that actually seriously believe that that's a uh that's uh that's actual and our actually an argument that's um um yeah anyway so there you go dr tony has just for just for some uh Comic relief uh, in uh, in Radio Free uh, Geneva today. You can look him up on YouTube. Believe me, that's not the only thing that you'll find uh, there. So, anyways, thanks for watching the program again for the rest of the week. I don't know. Um, we're just gonna have to work out, see what we can do from from uh, Colorado. Want to try to put together some programs, in Colorado? It worked well last time. Uh, the feed was good, so uh, we'll definitely be be attempting to uh, to do so. Uh, but uh, pray for all the preaching and teaching and stuff going on up there. And then uh, don't forget, uh, I mentioned on social media, we've got, uh, I know September of 2020 sounds like it's a long ways away, but um, the, uh, the early bird special, I think, uh, expires tonight at midnight on the uh, trip to Israel and Athens and Ephesus. Uh, be thinking about that. It's going to be a once-in-a-lifetime uh, type thing. Myself, Jeff Durbin, we're... We're going to be leading a group over there. It's going to be really, really exciting, Lord willing. Uh, and then um, very, very shortly after I get back, middle of August, we're heading for South Africa. Please pray for stuff there. There's a lot more resistance than normal. It's one thing we debate the Muslims. It's not that difficult to set that up. But uh, when we're trying to set up debates on other subjects, and speci specifically right now on marriage, we're running into resistance. And so pray uh, that the Lord would uh, allow these opportunities to take place. You'll constantly hear people that are Calvinists harp on this. They just keep repeating it, and they repeat it so much you start to think it's a biblical truth. of Lazarus, she says, Lazarus, come out. And Lazarus said, I can't, I'm dead. <laughs> That's not what he did. Lazarus came out. So you mean to tell me a dead person can respond to the command of Christ? Well, I can talk over your head like that. I know the Hebrew, the Greek, I've done theology. You, you can tell I know.
Do you really believe that it parallels the method of exegesis that we utilize to demonstrate those other things? Um, no. <laughs> Calvinists, even pastors, very openly smoke pipes and cigars just as they drink beer and wine. Even Jesus cannot override your unbelief. And you need to realize that he's gone from predeterminism. Now he's speaking of some kind of middle knowledge that God now has to... I deny and categorically deny middle knowledge. Then don't uh, beg the question that would demand me to force you to e embrace it. You're not always talking about necessarily God choosing something for no apparent reason, but you're choosing that meat because it's a favorable meat. There's a reason to have that cho the choice of that meat. underground bunker deep beneath the faculty cafeteria in New Orleans Baptist Theological Seminary, safe from all those moderate Calvinists, Dave Hunt fans, and those who have read and reread George Bryson's book, we are Radio Free Geneva, broadcasting the truth about God's freedom to save for his own eternal glory. Yes,